Hello and welcome to Generation 16, the series that showcases the history of Sega's Mega Drive. I'm your host, Greg Seward. While December 1990 was absolutely overrun by shooters, Sega itself broke up the monotony a bit by releasing this co-op game with an explosive twist. Let's get started. Although Sega has been moving further and further into original console games as the Mega Drive matures, that doesn't mean the arcade ports have gone away. Crackdown is the latest to support the Mega Drive's original mandate, to bring the arcade home. But this is a different type of arcade game. In Crackdown, you play as a team of resistance fighters in some far-out spandex uniforms, battling an army of robots who have turned against their human masters. Your goal is to set a series of bombs on each stage and then escape before time runs out. There's not a lot of exploration, as you can tell from the footage. The player is given a full map of each stage right from the start, the challenge is to get to each of the red X's and escape without losing all of your lives or running out of time. Obviously, this game is meant to be played cooperatively. Even when playing single player, you only get a small portion of the screen. Player 2's area is now filled with enemy stats. This is actually an upgrade from the original arcade game. Released in 1988, the Crackdown coin-op was also meant to be played multiplayer. Going single-player only resulted in blank space where the second player would have been. <laughs> Crackdown marks the first port of a System 24 game for the Mega Drive. Well, technically it could be said that Jumbo Ozaki Supermasters might be the first System 24 port on the Mega Drive, as it was clearly the inspiration for Naomichi Ozaki Supermasters, which came to the US as Arnold Palmer's Tournament Golf. Naomichi was actually the younger brother of Jumbo Ozaki. System 24 was an alternative to Sega's System 16, which is where a lot of the ports for the home console have come from so far. System 24 featured dual CPUs and was capable of outputting 2048 highly detailed sprites. In fact, this was the first arcade system from Sega that required a medium resolution monitor. Interestingly, early games for this board were housed on floppy disks. To switch games, operators simply had to install a new disk as well as add the proper security chip to the board. 
High scores and settings were saved directly to the floppy. The whole idea was that arcade owners could freshen up their stock without having to purchase an entirely new cabinet for each new game. Strangely enough, the US version of Crackdown was released by Sage's Creation. This may have to do with the fact that the Mega Drive port was apparently handled by Hot B, who previously developed Insector X for the system. Sage's creation was a U.S. publishing arm created by Hot B president Nobumitsu Kubo. Like so many other U.S. publishers around this time, it was most likely created to circumvent Nintendo's draconian third-party publisher rules in North America. Why didn't Sega release this game in the U.S. itself? Well, one reason may have been that it wasn't all that happy with the port. In an interview with the Game Developers Research Institute, Hot B coder Kimihiro Endo claimed that Sega didn't give them any of the source code to work from, and so he had to guess how the game logic worked by simply playing the arcade game. Apparently, Sega was disappointed because it was, quote, completely wrong. I don't think the game is all that bad. It's got some strangely difficult bits, like this part where you have to cross a moving bridge, it kind of sucks to lose a bunch of lives so quickly like this. Still, I had a really good time playing co-op to capture the footage for the show. Crackdown didn't set the world on fire when it was released on the Genesis, but it's an interesting play nowadays. One of the forgotten arcade ports for the system that's worth spending a little bit of time with. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And please consider supporting this show on Patreon. Join me next episode when the arcade powerhouse Taito returns to the Mega Drive. See you then.